Hello and welcome to the Type 053 Frigate Ship Brief. Before we get into the meat of today's briefing, we need to take a look at the history of the ship because this one's been around for many decades, going all the way back to the 1970s, uh, when the ship was a simple frigate with a twin rail launcher on the bow for air defense and a couple of uh, guns for gun action and it just wasn't very uh, capable even by 1970 standards because the twin rail launcher took so long to reload it effectively only had two shots in a, a contested airspace um, it was good for fleet defense which is the role of the frigate really uh, you tend to put frigates out on the picket line the outer rim if you will of the fleet uh, but in the 1970s uh, China didn't have like massive carrier fleets. They had more, uh, you know, battle groups uh, that would go together with, uh, you know, a destroyer or with a couple frigates and go out. And that would change significantly over the decades. Uh, but even for the 1970s, the type 053K version of this frigate we're going to talk about today uh, was not very good. Uh, a replacement was ordered for the type 053K. This was called project 055. And this came along uh, a little bit later on in the 1980s. Uh, this had replaced the uh, twin rail launcher with that six uh, HQ61 Bravo launcher that we'll get a close up here for you in just a second. And uh, so, but it used the same missile. So it was not really an upgrade. They could just fire six before they were Winchester versus two uh, on the older model, which had to reload, which took a very long time uh, by today's standards. Uh, they did fire the type 053 H2G, did shoot the uh, YJ-8A anti-ship missile, had a 42 kilometer range. So that is a, a significant upgrade there an anti-ship capability. But keep in mind, this multi-role frigate was often used as air defense. And in that role, she was very lackluster with this less than 10 kilometer range uh, surface to air missile. NATO name for this old version of the frigate we're talking about today is the Zhang Wei one or just Zhang Wei. So this is the type 053 H2G frigate. This is the frigate that replaced the one that was in 1970s that had that twin rail launcher. It kept the same type 79 100 millimeter twin gun, which is a significant amount of firepower. If you can get that gun within a range of something, shooting two 100 millimeter guns uh, puts a lot of shells down range. And you can see the HQ61 Bravo there. That's the capsulized surface to air missile. But again, very short range, less than 10 kilometers. And behind them is the uh, 37 millimeter AA guns, the PJ 76s. So keeping with the type 053 H2G frigate, you can see the YJ-8 Alpha uh, anti-ship cruise missiles. They had uh, two box, la box launchers of three apiece for a total of six. Uh, three facing port, three facing starboard, and the PJ-76 37 millimeter guns, again, air defense weapons, essentially, on the, uh, on the back there. So these two previous frigates, even though one was an upgrade of the other, were, in my opinion, failed designs. The Type 053K in the 1970s and 80s, and the Zero Type 53 um, H2G frigate, which just gave them more of the short range missiles and some significant surface uh, anti-ship capabilities with that missile. It's still not a very good air defense frigate. And uh, so she was more effective, I think, with her multi-role uh, than she was with being the picket air defense role. Um, she did, I should mention, have the helicopter pad on the uh, aft end, and they did operate the um, Russian K helicopters off that now. On today's lecture, they have upgraded that to the new uh, Z9 helicopter. So this is the type 053H3 Zhangui 2 fast frigate helicopter mod. That's what the H3 means. All right, so 10 053H3 were commissioned between 1999 and 2005. And this is the modern iteration of this frigate here. Two of the 10 that were built were built for Bangladesh or well, sold to Bangladesh. The, I believe originally they were meant to be used for China, but Bangladesh cut a deal 
and got two of them. And those are still in active duty today, by the way. Bangladesh continues to operate uh, this ship that you see here, but in their Navy under their flag. So the eight remaining that were built do serve in the PLAN. That's the Chinese Navy. So significant improvements uh, from the air defense from that old HQ-61 was the HQ-7 SAM. And if you're, you know, if you watch this series at all, you're very familiar with the HQ-7 already. This is the Chinese copy of the French Colette uh, surface air missile. And they did increase uh, the anti-ship missiles from six to eight, but it's still the, uh, the C-802, which is that subsonic long range sea skimming anti-ship missile. Think of the Exocet essentially is what it is. Um, so, you know, a lot of French influence on this upgrade. If you think of the time in the late 90s, uh, China is putting a lot of money into infrastructure and its military. You know, this is what's creating a booming economy in uh, China is a lot of these internal projects, these works projects, employing millions of Chinese people that are either building uh, large buildings all around the country and dams and other huge infrastructure projects, highways and whatnot to connect everything together. And then military, they're building a lot of tanks, planes, and especially ships with programs like this. So the midlife upgrade um, we'll talk about briefly. That happened in 2015, so keep that date in mind. These ships date all the way back to basically 2000, uh, but they did get a midlife upgrade uh, that improved their ESM capability and point defense. And uh, only two of the eight have been modernized at the time of this recording. All right, so they're built in the two main shipyards. Keep in mind, China has many, many shipyards, but there's two very large ones. One is in Guangzhou and one's up north in Shanghai. This is where a lot of the warships are built between these two. So, Zhang Wei 2, by the numbers, um, I've highlighted the modernization, which is the um, second item under each one of these colored... Um, boxes here. So they're starting with the diesel engines. They have two shafts that can push um, the ship to up to 27 knots. 27 knots would be considered slow by European and American Navy standards. But the ships that operate even today in the 2020s often are limited to about 30 knots. And that's pushing it in the Chinese Navy. They haven't figured out speed yet. They've got a lot of other things figured out. But uh, efficiency and speed is not one of them. Uh, YJ-83 anti-ship cruise missile, they have eight of those. And then they have the HQ-7 SAM, that's the copy of the Colette. The modernization gave, gives them the HQ-10, and we'll go over these, of course. The HPJ-87 100 millimeter gun is a single gun, 56 um, uh, is the barrel. Two twin type 76A 37 millimeter guns were replaced with modernization by the HPJ-12. 30 millimeter point defense mod. And this is the insane weapon that shoots out uh, a huge number of rounds per minute point defense, you know. Uh, two type 87 six barrel fixed ASW mortars. This is the same that they have on their destroyers as well. This is the standard ASW rocket bomb unit RBU that uh, Russia uses. China has a copy of it as well. Six barrel and 26 barrel chaff decoys. These fire combos, chaff and flare for every decoy. And of course, the Z9C helicopter. This is a very versatile helicopter. It can do land attack, ship attack, and ASW warfare. Very, very multi-role there. Over on the right-hand side, we have a lot of their sensors, like the Type 517 Bravo Knife Rest Air Search and the Type 360 Seagull Air Search. These two are absolute staples in the modern Chinese Navy. You'll see those two sensors on just about every ship. Right below that, we get into fire control, which can vary a lot. Uh, we have the Type 343 GA, which is for the guns, fire control, and the Type 345 fire control for the HQ-7, until the HQ-7 got um, replaced by the HQ-10. And then the Type 344 SSM uh, is for the... Um, is for the surface surface missiles. That's targeting, by the way, initial targeting before it gets launched. Uh, it has a different connection after it's launched and then guns mod. Uh, the SR-210 is the ESM. 
the 981-3 is the noise jammer. We don't have any specifics on these. These are very sensitive instruments that there is no public data on. Just know that it's capable of electronic monitoring. It can record radar emissions. Uh, it can also jam radar emissions within spectrums. And it has a, a deception jammer, so it can make itself look like another unit. It can radiate as if it's you know a destroyer you know or some other ship. The type 341 rice lamp is the uh, point defense uh, radar, as well as the rice bowl. The 347G is the upgraded one. Uh, the Echo Type 5 hull mounted uh, medium frequency sonar. Um, we, we're not sure what it is, but it seems to be pretty close to um, bull or steer hide and bull nose. It's probably a Chinese version of those systems, but we're not sure. And then finally, uh, this is all connected. Everything here talks to each other through the uh, ZKJC3 fire control system. And that's the ship wide system there. All right. So here are the diesels. This is the type 12 E390 VA. So 12 cylinder uh, E390 uh, would be like uh, the size of the block. V is the configuration of the cylinders. Like all those letters mean something, but just know that it's, you know, it's got two of these medium speed diesel engines. Uh, each, you know, turns a shaft. Uh, they can also turn a generator, make electricity for the ship. Keep that in mind. Uh, 12 cylinder V configuration and does uh, 7885 horsepower at 480 shaft RPM. That's a four stroke. So, uh, the cylinder firing rates, you know, is, is less than that. There is also an 18 cylinder one that's obviously longer, but I could not confirm if it fits in this ship. So we know that it at least has 12 cylinders, um, but there is an 18 cylinder version of this engine. And if they have that, that's almost 13,000 horsepower, um, but unable to confirm that. If you just say 12 cylinder, you're going to be fine. Okay, type 517 Bravo Nifrest Air Search Radar. You've seen this before. It's just about in every Chinese lecture. This thing is the mainstay for air search because it works. It's long range, you know, pretty high fidelity for what it does. Uh, very reliable. Probably reliability is probably the biggest thing here. So it's 300 kilometer range, 100 hertz pulse rate, peak power, 75 kilowatts. These are all public numbers. Keep in mind, the actual numbers may be a little bit better. Uh, beam width is 21 degrees and it can be stationary or it can rotate up to six rotations a minute to give you an idea of how, how fast this thing can turn. And there she is just aft of the smokestack. All right, here's the type 360 Seagull radar. This radar, this is your typical, you know, banana shaped radar that spins round and round and it can track both air and surface contact. So this is a good backup for the air radar in case the knife rest fails and it can do both air and surface. So 250 kilometer range air, very good radar. All the way up to, you know, 10,000 meters, almost 100,000 feet in altitude. So it's doing a full spectrum search. You know, 140 kilowatts power with 28 dB gain, um, which by today's standard is pretty good. It's not, not great, but keep in mind, this is an old radar. And uh, and again, it, it, it works because it's reliable. They put them on the ships and has uh, 900 pulses per second. Here's the type 345 Caster 2. This is the MR35 fire control radar. This will uh, direct um, your point defense uh, stuff caster two and also uh, the, uh, the, the uh, missiles. This is a 30 kilometer anti-air range. Uh, the caster missiles will take this data and uh, fire off in the, in that direction. They can detect sea skimming incoming missiles up to 15 kilometers and uses the KU band radar. Now I'm going to be honest with you here. I've not heard of KU before, but I've heard of K band. So this might be a typo uh, on the uh, sources. I'm using Jane's fighting ships for this source. Um, so I'll say it's a K band radar, but according to James, it's KU. Uh, it also has IR tracking. That's what that little camera looking thing on the right hand side is, is infrared is a 30 kilowatt power, 21 decibels a gain. And look at the repetition rates, uh, 7,200 pulses per second. That gives you an idea of the range of the radar because it is relatively short range compared to that 250 kilometer we just talked about. This one's only going out to 30 kilometers. So it doesn't take that long for that radar pulse to get out to that range. Therefore, it can start a second pulse and it does this 7,000 times a second. 
very fast update radar, which is what you need when you're trying to shoot down highly, you know, high speed, you know, high bearing rate, uh, especially incoming. You know, if it's an incoming weapon, you want to get a, a missile on it quickly, right? And so it's got that high update, right? So the missile has a better chance of hitting it. Here's the type 343 GA wasp head, because if you look at the picture on the right there, it does look a little bit like a bug head. Uh, this is the fire control radar for the 100 millimeter gun. It's also called the Wakwan radar. Uh, fire control uh, is for the HPJ87. It also provides initial targeting data for the YJ83 missiles. This is a very interesting looking um, radar. The Type 344 or MR34. This is the fire control radar for the 100 millimeter gun and the SSMs. This replaces the radar we just looked at. So this is the modernization. Remember, only two hulls got this so far. So it replaces the uh, 343GA. It's a multifunction fire control radar developed internally by China, by the uh, Zhine Research Institute. It is an IJ band radar, which is typical for uh, gun control radars. That's the frequency range that you would expect to see, but also has TV and laser rangefinder. This tells us that the guns can be targeted manually using the TV camera and the laser rangefinder to uh, direct the, the barrel. Uh, track shells and targets. Uh, oh, it tracks shells and targets at the same time. So the radar can watch the shell flight as it uh, gets close to the target and then make adjustments accordingly. And that's a pretty advanced capability uh, for the uh, 2000s when this is uh, on board. Type 341 rice lamp. Remember, I told you this was uh, for the point defense. Uh, Believe derived from the US AIM-7 Sparrow Air Missile System. So that's because it shares a lot of the same performance characteristics as the US one. And it also tells us that this is a semi-active homing uh, radar. So it's gonna highlight the target with a continuous transmit beam that changes in pulse so that the range can be uh, calculated and that's gonna direct uh, the weapon system. So the I-band fire control radar is similar to the Soviet shipborne Hawk Screech, which is a 60s and 70s era radar. So because they worked with the Soviet Union for so long, it's entirely possible that they got this from the Soviets in terms of design concept and performance. But guess where the Soviets got it from? <laughs> That's right, they got it from the AIM-7 Sparrow. So in the end, all roads lead back to the AIM-7 Sparrow for the system. Using the directed, to the, it's used to direct the Type 76A 37 millimeter guns, and those are gonna be replaced with modernization. But those are the twin barrel, uh, short range anti-air guns that are rapid fire, 37 millimeter, trying to shoot down airplanes, helicopters, and incoming missiles. Here is the Type 347 Gulf Rice Bowl fire control radar replaces the rice lamp we just looked at, and it directs the HPJ-12 30 millimeter point defense weapon, the one that spits out thousands of rounds a minute. Uh, this is the G variant of the gun. Remember I told you there's lots of different variants of the Type 347. I've told you that in the past. Uh, so this is the G variant standing for gun. X-band radar, X-band, very high frequency, extremely high update rate. Um, these are short range, high precision uh, radar bands. Anytime you see X-band, think high precision, short range, because that's what X-band does so well. A 30 kilometer anti-aircraft range, 15 kilometer anti-missile range, and 150 kilowatts of power. Here's that HQ-7. This is the old school one, remember? borrowed, copied, licensed, and then mass produced uh, from France uh, by China. This is an eight cell SAM launcher. This has an interesting backstory that I've told before, but I'll repeat it again, is uh, they were working with France to have French systems on board their ships in the 80s. And uh, they straight up copied this and France uh, forced them basically to pay for the license and they did, which is not something China would do today. Um, they've, they've demonstrated over the last 30 years, they'll just straight up copy something and not pay for the license, of course. But in this case they did at least for a couple of years before they just started producing these things in mass and put them on their ships. And these are all being replaced now, by the way, but the HQ seven is still on a handful of these frigates. Uh, as the time of this recording, this missile system, ILC 1992, based on the French Cur Curtal system, uh, 12 kilometer range, very short range, five kilometer in altitude, um, 
6.5 effective range against sea skimming missile. This is your last chance to destroy that incoming harpoon or whatever exoset, right? You know, before it gets into point defense range of your cannons, right? Uh, you're going to get one shot at this. Now, it's six to 10 seconds between launch, which is why you're only going to get one shot. Because if you're shooting that harpoon at six kilometers and you're waiting six seconds, you're not going to get a second shot off before uh, it's been determined if that harpoon is going to hit you or not. Yeah. So single target track system shoots one at a time and that target must be engaged before it shoots again. This leads to the six to 10 second launch time uh, between missiles. If it were to switch targets and shoot again, that first missile would just become, you know, ballistic, it wouldn't have any guidance. All right. Eagle Strike. Boy, the Chinese are really proud of this missile. It's an Exocet copy, in my opinion. Uh, extended range, you know, long range Exocet. It's the YJ-83 Eagle Strike anti-ship cruise missile. NATO name is uh, CSSN-8 Cicada or Cicade. I don't see it in 1998. Uh, has 180 kilometer range, uh, subsonic ski, sea skimming, uh, active radar homing, it's self homing, doesn't need any assistance once it's launched. Uh, semi-armor piercing 190 kilogram warhead, which is pretty much the same as the Exocet. <laughs> it is literally, it's just a copy turbojet pr uh, propulsion with a solid rocket booster motor to push it and get that turbojet spinning. And then the rocket booster falls off after about, I don't know, four seconds and, uh, splashes. If you're a sonar man, you gotta listen for that splash. And then you, uh, watch the rocket go, uh, with the turbojet the rest of the way. And there they are. They have two quad launchers, one facing port, one facing starboard, total of eight missiles. All right. The PJ 87, hundred millimeter naval gun. Um, this thing's a mess jams a lot, but it's a hundred millimeter gun. If that thing hits you, you're going to know it. It's based on the French model, uh, 1968, 17 kilometer effective range against surface. I'm sorry, 12 kilometer effective range, 17 kilometer ballistic range, but you're not going to hit anything at that unless it's a stationary target. Keep that in mind. If you're doing shore bombardment, 17 kilometers will work for you. But if you're trying to hit a ship or anything that's moving 12 kilometers, uh, six kilometer range, if it's trying to shoot down an aircraft, I, uh, you know, if you're using this gun against an aircraft, things are not going well. Um, it does have different types of burst of fire. It can do single, um, two round burst, three round burst, or six, all the way up to six. Um, this equates to 20, 45 and 90 rounds per minute. So pretty respectable rounds per minute, assuming it doesn't jam. You're not going to get 90 rounds out of this gun without it jamming. In my opinion, uh, it does have different rounds, a uh, high explosive round an anti air round, which is like a, it's like a big shotgun shell. It has pellets that kind of burst into a cloud and that cloud will rip through an airplane or an incoming missile, you know, and then also has illumination rounds a la world war two. Those are still effective. There's times when you need the illumination rounds. You know, if you're supporting troops on the beach, you're going to have illumination rounds over the troops or at least over their targets. And uh, there at the bottom, I say it jams frequently because that cannot be overstated in this case. It jams a lot. Okay. Twin type 76, 37 millimeter guns. These were the ones that were directed by that, uh, that radar we were just talking about the seven, Okay, for uh, twin barrel turrets, uh, 750 rounds per minute combined rate of fire between the two different barrels. Here you can see the picture of the barrels just smoking like a madman because they had just completed a long burst. Uh, there you can see what looks like a rice bowl radar. Rice. And a 4.7 uh, kil kilometer effective range. It is auto fed, 360 degrees of capability. Spinning this thing around, of course, that uh, does not account for any kind of superstructure you know, in the way. They have these... Um, basically on the four corners of the ship. You have two forward port and starboard of the superstructure and then two aft port and starboard of the helicopter hangar right on the top. And so they have good fields of fire, um, 360 degrees capable and fire control uh, radar only for these in the uh, point defense mode. Okay, HQ-10 SAM point defense. This is a new um, upgrade this IOC to 19 or sorry, 2013 was installed in 2015. Uh, this is a copy of our, well, okay. Technically not a copy. It is very similar 
to the US RIM uh, 16, 116 RAM system. And the only reason why it's not a copy is this missile doesn't roll. It doesn't spin as it comes out like the American one does. But the performance is very similar in terms of range and rate of fire. And the mission's the same. It's, it's not a long range missile. It's to go very fast, Mach 2, out to nine kilometers, and hopefully hit something along the way, like an incoming uh, attack, whether it's a helicopter or it could be a cruise missile. And you can see there it has a limited uh, magazine of eight shots in the one photoed right there. So this uh, is much more reliable, much more likely to hit an incoming cruise missile than any ballistic system. And this is why they went with it. But uh, it's heavily influenced by the United States RIM 116. All right. The HPJ 12 uh, 30 millimeter point defense. Uh, this thing is a monster. It has seven barrels that rotate Gatlin style, shoots 5,000 rounds per minute, has a 640 round magazine, which means it's not going to be firing long, but it's just point defense. Uh, it's going to do its mission or it's going to fail and be exploded by an incoming attack. It doesn't need a lot of rounds. There are reloads for this on board, of course, but the magazine is pretty much all the only rounds you're going to have in a, in a fight. And then you can, if you survive the fight, you can reload it. It is both radar and optical guided. They can put this in manual mode and shoot surface targets at close range. We saw them do this off the coast of, um, oh, what was that? off the coast of Africa, the Horn of Africa near Somalia and Yemen. They're uh, fighting pirates and stuff. They would fire warning shots with those. And the only way to do a warning shot across the bow would be to do it manually because the radar, all it would do is uh, lock onto the target. Well, then you could add an offset. So you could do uh, yeah, shots across the bow with the radar, but you would have to enter how far in front you want that to be manually, or you could just grab the stick yourself and do it yourself. But uh, this, this has been employed uh, against pirates in uh, the Sea of Yemen, near, near Yemen. <clears throat> okay, the Type 87 240 millimeter anti-sub rocket bomb. These are basically rocket bomb units, RBUs, from the Russians, uh, but this is the Chinese copy of it. IOC to 1992. Uh, Man, rocket bomb units have been around since World War II, you know. Think of a depth charge, but with a little rocket on the back of it that pushes it, you know, five kilometers, you know, out to a fixed range. So here you can see it has two fixed launchers on the bow. Um, they look like they can rotate, but Jane says they don't. So uh, we're going to go with that they're fixed. And so if you want to turn them, you got to turn the ship. Uh, that just could be a public declared capability when the actual capability is they do pivot but publicly they're fixed in this position has a 340 kilogram warhead uh 36 total if you count the reloads and a five kilometer range uh if if you let the ship get this close to you that they're firing this at you effectively you've messed up so uh, this, in my opinion, as an experienced submariner, not a useful weapon at all, probably more likely to be used against an incoming torpedo to try and break it up with the pressure wave that this thing would create. But they would that would be a very lucky shot because this thing is not aimed by any sort of sensor. It is fixed in one position. You point the ship and it shoots 5000 km or five kilometers rather. I almost said 5000 yards. Anyway, here's the helicopter. Uh, arguably the most effective thing on this platform is the Harbin. The Z9C can be piloted by one man if necessary. Uh, has a max speed of 190 uh, miles per hour, but cruises at 162. Uh, five hours endurance of as long as it's not hovering. And the reason why that's important is because whenever you're doing ASW warfare, you're hovering a lot, which would significantly reduce, reduce rather your um, endurance time. It has a 15,000 foot ceiling, pretty standard for a helicopter. Uh, that, that tends to vary between 15 and 20,000, depending on the helicopter we're talking about. And you can see that it still uses the Thales or a copy of the Thales HS-12 dipping sonar. Uh, I have no information on whether or not this is licensed or a copy. Uh, I have a hard time believing that Thales is still supplying China with um, dipping sonars, but so it might just be a copy of it. Just know it's based on that. Uh, the KL... KLC-11 uh, J-band surface search radar. This extends the targeting capability of the ship to over the horizon. This is how it would probably employ 
that anti-ship cruise missile, the Eagle Strike, out to its maximum range. If it didn't have any other sensors, i.e. it's not with a fleet, which is very unlikely, you're probably not going to see this ship by itself unless it's transiting somewhere. Uh, just to get from point A to point B, you know, if it's on a mission, it's going to be with either another frigate or another destroyer or even more ships. Um, but if for whatever reason it was the only sensor, it would put out this um, helicopter in the direction of the target and just get some uh, good, good search data there. Uh, it could use the, uh, the, the uh, Seagull radar, but it's more than likely that they would use this because uh, the Seagull would give the ship's position away immediately, whereas the helicopter would not. So tactically, this would be much more likely to be used. Uh, it does have a pylon rocket system. Um, it can shoot or drop rather torpedoes, but it also has a gun pod. So you could strafe uh, you know, targets with this if you want to. It does have a TV guided C-701 anti-ship missile. I am told that this missile is not used anymore, but it is capable of firing it. Um, I don't have any data on it, but apparently it's not very good or very reliable. Uh, the TY-90 air-to-air missile uh, can be put on one of the side pylons. I assume that's similar to a, a Sting or a Sidewinder missile. All right, and that's it, folks. Man, that is the Type 053H3, the Zhang Wei 2 Fast Frigate Helicopter mod. Um, this is an effective update from earlier designs, even without the modernization in 2015. They just finally got to a build that could effectively detect surface and air targets out to a long range, which is its purpose. This is an air defense frigate with multi-role capability. Okay, but it's just not good at anything else. You know, it's got a helicopter that's pretty good for ASW and maybe some over the target horizon. But you're basically putting this ship out there, one, to be a target for the Americans or whoever's searching for you. They're going to shoot this thing first, probably because they're, they're going to see it first. But it's got a long range radar. So it can see, hopefully, those American F-18s coming, you know, hundreds of kilometers away so that they're aware of them. You know, we don't have any data on the performance of this radar against the F-35, of course, but it's probably not good. The F-35 is probably a ghost on these older radars, I would assume, but we don't know that for sure. So take that with a grain of salt. That's just a little bit of my opinion, my final thought on how this ship would perform in modern warfare. It would detect a F-16 and F-18, not an F-35 at 100 kilometers, you know. It is a cheap air defense. These ships are cheap. They could have kept building many, many more of them. Uh, what they seem to have done is they've shifted to a modernized Corvette, which is going to be the next lecture, by the way. We have the Chinese PLAN Corvette coming up for you, and that has a lot more modern systems, uh, has the same mission or similar to mission to this ship, uh, and is a little bit cheaper and more modern. So... But for the time, for the 2000s, this was the best that they had for uh, picket defense, air defense in a picket position, which is, in, which is critical to fleet defense. And uh, like I already said, it's multi-mission capable. It does have a sonar system. It's just not very good. Uh, I bet you the helicopter probably has a better sonar system than the mainframe is. So I, I really want to bang the drum on the helicopter. Uh, the, the two big things that this ship brings to the fleet is that long range radar capability for detection and the uh, helicopter for over the horizon um, surface targeting and ASW search. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you, Patreons. Thank you, YouTube members. You guys are the best. Uh, this is the last lecture I'm writing myself. After this, it is a collaboration between me and defense industry professionals. So we will see what that brings us next time when we talk about the Chinese modern Corvette. I'll see you then. Thanks for supporting us.